1989, at the University of Utah, Professors Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons used a chemistry experiment to achieve what appears to have been a nuclear reaction. Nuclear physicists, however, thought the idea of obtaining nuclear energy from chemistry was preposterous. Today, 16 years later, acceptance for this phenomenon is slowly growing, even among nuclear physicists. Cold fusion, however, is still largely misunderstood and disbelieved. We're here today to visit with scientists at the United States Navy SPAWAR Systems Command Center who have been researching cold fusion for the last 16 years. Let's go inside and take a look. Yeah, sure. Okay, right. well this uh, setup is for the external electric field. We apply the external electric field across these two electrodes and inside there we have a, a working electrode that's laying flat, which I don't have an example of. And then we have our counter electrode above it, such as one like that. And, and these good. little plastic cells that, that you buy for less than a dollar. Yeah, uh, and what's nice is that you don't have to worry about any uh, contributions of, of uh, other things that you would get from glass. So that's why we've gone to these cells. Well, let me get a close-up of that. So that, is that, are, are these palladium wires? That's platinum. Platinum. That's, that's a counter electrode. We went to a used electronics store and bought a power supply out of, a, out of, out of an old TV set that, that produced several oh. thousand volts of direct current. And, and then we just, we just clipped the little electrodes, alligator clips, from, from one side to the other here. And, and that creates this big electric field, potential field, across, across the cell. And then we did the experiment inside the cell. You can see the setup is very simple. You know, we just, just taped the, the, the copper foil to this and, and, uh, and then just hook it up with alligator clips and away we go. It, it's, it's not an expensive or, or very involved setup. The palladium chloride, lithium chloride starting solution. Mm -hmm. and in a deuterated water. Right. So, so we... Pour it in there? Yeah, pour it in here and, and put the the working electrode down below and that creates a and and based on this there's probably two or three thousand volts yeah this, this one we have new ones that can go up to thirty thousand there's no current flowing you know so you, you don't want to touch it because then there will be a path for the current flow but but you know there's no current flowing so there's this, this huge potential field but actually these experiments we're not even measuring excess heat you see we don't have a thermometer a thermistor there we this don't have any calorimetry this is more about why it's happening this is more about let's see if we can discover why it's happening and what's and, being formed and what's being formed yeah and and what the parameters are with this kind of cell design we get an immediate readout if something happens because it shows up on in the piezoelectric transducer just just like a microphone you know when you when you talk in the microphone, it immediate it responds immediately. You don't have to wait several minutes for it to respond. So, so as these uh, heat bursts were occurring here, we immediately see what what the result is. So we know exactly what the parameters are at that time. That's a piezoelectric crystal. It's something that in the Navy we use as hydrophones and to listen for sound underwater. Uh, in layman's terms, it's a microphone. Okay, this is one of our earlier cells, and this is the one where we were measuring the difference in temperature between the uh, uh, cathode, which is the copper foil, and the solution. And uh, it looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a time machine. Yeah. Right, give me a look. It was the f one of the first ones. Uh, in fact, it was one of the first ones we were doing. Uh, we were able to measure the temperature of the uh, cathode as we were doing the experiment, and uh, there's another thermal couple here for the solution phase. It looks like we also have a bubbler on that, so we yeah, can... Yeah, just make sure it's isolated. Here, there's two photomultipliers, and then from yeah. the counts you can figure out how much tritium you got. Very good, yeah. That's an essential part of tritium analysis. Yeah, and I bought this in uh, 1990, and it's still state of the art. New Energy Institute, an independent, non-profit, public benefit corporation which provides information and educational services to help bring about a clean energy revolution.